My name is Dan Beal. I'm a music teacher at Lawrenceville Elementary School in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. This is my eighth year in teaching. Um, at some point or another, I've taught pre-K all the way to 12th grade, and uh, I'm currently teaching pre-K to third grade here in this building. Got about 350 kids, and I am a huge supporter of music technology in the classroom. <laughs> Sometimes I forget where I first heard about Jam Hub, but I'm 95% sure. I was at um, the NJMEA convention, New Jersey Music Educators, and just happened to catch it. It was like a, a small little portion of a presentation, and it was, uh, it was just uh, technology in the elementary music classroom. Um, Amy Burns, a real pioneer in elementary music. And I just, I guess it just stuck with me, and I had to look it up, and then, uh, well, I, I found a few videos. I found a video with uh, Sarah Mon, uh, doing working with her kids and the tablets and, and all that. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, look at these kids. They're all on iPads. They're all getting excited. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, I think I could pull that off. You know, we're getting iPads. The PTO is kind enough to give us 24 iPads on a cart. And I said, okay, I got iPads. And I, and I, I remember it was, I found out just in time for my budget deadline. I got to shift my budget around and buy a Jam Hub green room. So I bought that. And then, you know, I was like, what now? And then I reached out to John Francis, you know, and I found out he works with the teachers. And from that point on, it was just like a headfirst dive. You know, uh, John gave me a lot of tips on how to get started, how to handle all the knobs, how to get everything going, what equipment do I need. Slowly worked it in and realized the full potential of this. And the problem was is that a jam hub needs instruments. And we, even though we had 24 iPads on a cart, they're not mine and the whole building shares them, okay? So I realized, how can I get six iPads just for me so that this Jam Hub can be used daily, not just once a week or every two weeks? So I uh, decided, you know what? We have an education foundation, uh, LTEF, Lawrence Township Education Foundation, and it, is, it exists specifically for teachers in our district to write grants, and I said, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write a grant to get six iPads and that way, the Jam Hub can be used all the time. And it was called Jammin' with Jam Hub. Had a nice ring to it. And I worked with Ivy Cohen, the executive director. I pitched the idea. She loved it. And she worked with me through the process. You know, I uh, didn't want to ask for too much, didn't want to ask for too little. Found the happy medium. And it was just this kind of new and exciting thing. And like, you know, I, some of the board members were saying, I never heard of this thing, Jam Hub. And like, you know, what is all this about? And, and, uh, Luckily, they, they loved the idea. And I guess, I think what really kicked it is they wanted, they, they were intrigued by second and third grade students writing music and performing music on iPads. I don't think they knew what it was gonna sound like, but we got these six iPads, we got a jam hub, um, and we just decided, I just thought to myself, I said, how can we put the collaborative work on display uh, you know, the individual work and the collaborative work of these students. And I, so I put, I put some feelers out. I sent some letters home to the kids, and I was lucky enough to get 24 kids interested. Um, 19 of them chose to write a song and do a slideshow, and five of them became my iPad band. They all wanted to perform. And so um, each student had to meet with me six times. Uh, you know, it was either in the morning, at recess, and basically uh, my composers, those 19 kids that wrote a song, I would... Uh, just guide them through the process. Uh, didn't really give them a lot of ideas. I really kind of let them take the wheel. I just kind of show them, all right, here's some loops you can use. You know, Try these, maybe mix that up if you want. Here's your volume screen. You can adjust the volume of all these tracks. Oh, do you want to add more measures? Touch here. And all of the decisions were made by them. We're talking eight, seven, eight-year-old kids. And it was just really neat seeing these kids be proud and take ownership over these songs they were writing. Um, now my performers, it was a much different scenario. I'd invite them down here and we would jam. We would have a jam session. Um, sometimes we would do it on the jam hub. We'd plug in and I'd give them advice. I'd you know, let them go solo for a while. Then I said, okay, let's, let's listen to each other. You know, I'll put a backing track on and then we'd all take turns. Like, all right, let's hear my, this person solo over here. All right, you solo over here. And we would just kind of get used to each other. And they just went nuts. They're sitting there, they got their music stand, their iPad, and, and they just can't believe how cool it sounds. Like, I'm, I'm playing this amazing instrument, you know, my peers are here, they think it's cool, and, you know, they, they feel like they're part of this really cool group that's making all this interesting music on iPads. Each student in Jam Hub Club had to get initiated. 
They had to come down, had to learn the rules, they had to learn what Jam Hub's all about, what can you do musically with Jam Hub, what you can do individually, but also collaboratively with the people in the group. And then, you know, once the music got going and they understood the rules, I kind of let them, it's really free form, you know, like one student might just want to work by themselves that day and, uh, you know, um, I can work with them one on one, you know, in channel five. I say, oh, I really like what you're doing. You know, but then you got other kids, they just want to listen to each other. And they don't even care if there's four iPads going on in their ears. Some kids like that cacophony, you know. Now eventually they realize, okay, well, that gets older after a while. Maybe, maybe I'll just talk to this person. You know, uh, earlier today I saw a few students, like, they verbatim just said, hey, do you want to maybe do a band right now? And, uh, like, that's my goal eventually, that it, it, the novelty wears off of just, let's just listen to everybody, and it becomes this, let's communicate with each other. And I encourage that. I said, you know, why don't you uh, play guitar and you play bass? and I'll play drums, you know, and try to get that, let's get that musical uh, working to work, like, let's learn how to work together as musicians and really kind of take turns with playing and, and realize, does this sound good together, what we're doing, or are we competing with each other? You know, which of course is a real skill in band, choir, orchestra. It's a real skill in rock bands. You know, it can't be everybody playing all at once. Putting it on in a concert is a public display of everything that is them in the form of music. So I think that the fact that they get to take a song they wrote and put it on for an audience is very empowering for them. And I, I am really curious to see in five years, eight years, where these kids are going to go. Because I'm going to keep tabs on them. Like, you know, they started off writing songs in second grade. How many of these kids are going to go on to be a composer or to be in a band or to just, even if it's just a hobby, you know, just let's just, go, I'm just going to go write a song. I got a few hours, you know. Um, but my performers, though, I mean, that, that's a totally different experience. Teach, uh, it's just like public speaking. I mean, if you're a musician and, you're, and you've got the confidence to get in front of a large group of people, play an instrument, um, that's a life skill. And, you, you know, it's, you're not hitting these performers. Is a little different than my composers? They're not just hitting play. They're putting themselves out there. It's their fingers making the notes. It's their ear making the decisions on what to play. And this is the building blocks for them to get confident to be a performer in front of other people. Seeing the reaction of the kids, of the adults, hearing them jam to their, to their loops or to the 12-bar blues and seeing them play these really cool instruments, I think that there is an outlet for that in this school. And I think after having, let's see, uh, this year's first graders see it, and even this year's second graders, there's going to be more kids that want to do this next year.